Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to our breakdown for day one of the Nagoya Basho, where we're going to focus on new Ozeki Kirishima's matchups. So, of course, with Takakesho leaving, his first day fight is against Nishikigi, and that's a matchup where we only have one fight to study. That's not really worth it, so by Democratic community vote, we'll check out Miyogiryu and Koto Echo today. Over the course of their careers, Miyogiryu has absolutely stonked out on Koto Echo to the tune of an 11-3 record. However, Koto Echo started making some headway in 2022, and the series is only 4-2 for Miyogiryu over the past year and a half. Can Koto Echo keep making the adjustments he needs, or is Miyogiryu gonna keep expanding the gap? Let's dig in. Koto Echo braces for impact, but Miyogiryu just drives through him, controls his arms to keep him from twisting away, and backs him out. Not much to see here, and although I never saw their fights before this, the way this starts makes it look like Koto Echo has lost hope of finding a way to beat this guy ever. Koto Echo tries a baby Hanka, but his deflection does nothing and Miyogiryu just follows him easily. From this fairly balanced position, they lean each other back and forth slightly to try and find leverage points, but the main movement is Koto Echo driving Mio back. Eventually Mio realizes he's getting too close to the rope and darts left, getting both arms up to attempt a push down, but Koto Echo's right arm is too far around Mio's back for him to be dislodged. He keeps up easily and drives Mio out. It's worth noting here that of Mio's 8 victories over Koto Echo up to this point, Five were by Oshidashi and two by Yori Kiri, which are wins secured by attacking and pushing the opponent back. Seeing Koto Echo make this look easy begs the question of why he so rarely beats Mio Giryu, but look at how upright Mio is and compare it to their next fight. Oh Koto Echo goes for another sidestep deflection, which is sort of brilliant. It's incredibly rare for a wrestler to try any sort of sidestep on the Tachiai twice in a row against the same guy because it feels like the opponent will be ready for it. This one works, at least somewhat, sending Mio off balance, though he's able to pivot and face Koto Echo without much trouble. They're in essentially the same position as their last fight, each landing a left arm clamp on the other. Koto slowly steps right, and you can see he's making attempts to drive forward, but Mio's got his weight more forward than he did in September, and it makes all the difference. Koto Echo decides he has to make something happen, and he tries to force Mio off balance, but this just destabilizes him enough to let Mio slide him back and control him to the ground. It's a double hanka! I love it! They hand fight to try and control the other's arms, but end up back in their usual mutual left arm clamp. Koto Echo gets his sumo bounce going, and just like in September, Miyogiryu's weight gets too high, which allows Koto Echo to force him out. The two victories look a fair bit different, but they're both thanks to Miyogiryu's center of gravity rising enough for Koto Echo to take advantage. This time Koto Echo absorbs the contact, then steps to his right. Miyogiryu ends up with all the pushing leverage though, and drives him back to the rope. Once Koto Echo hits the rope, Mio knows he's going to push off, so he immediately pivots and gives Koto Echo nothing to actually push. Koto Echo pulls his own veteran move and spins to face Mio at an angle that puts his foot on the rope again without him needing to be pushed into it. However, once his right foot gets on top of the hay rather than against it, Mio Giryu just has to press forward and Koto Echo doesn't have the brace necessary to resist. Given that Koto Echo won two of the previous three, it might beg the question of why he didn't lock in the grapple and try to get Mio Giryu standing too upright again. It's possible Koto wasn't positive he could do it reliably, or that he felt he needed to set it up rather than grapple immediately. Remember the fight in the middle that Mio won. Once he had his weight down, Koto Echo was helpless to do anything, and Koto might have felt there was too great a risk of the fight going that way to just dive in. Koto Echo finally decides to face Mio Giryu up, and this time he gets his right elbow in the air. This makes it impossible for Mio Giryu to clamp on that side, which Koto Echo seems perfectly happy to avoid even if he doesn't get the corresponding clamp. Mio seems content to force Koto's arm to stay up there, and they hand fight on the other side. This fight comes down to the smallest of moves. Mio Giryu gets his hand above Koto Echo's, Koto swipes his hand around to slap Mio's down, and when Mio gets his hand out of the way, he's free to land it on top of Koto Echo's head. With a 4 inch height advantage, he has plenty of leverage to essentially pull Koto Echo by the head and step away while launching Koto into the splits. Overall, this still seems to be a Mio Giryu favored matchup. 
Kotoeko does have at least one proven route to victory, but if he's not willing or able to get inside and at least try to find a way to force Miyogiryu upright enough to be pushed around, he hasn't shown another reliable method of securing the dub. But it's definitely a fight where Miyogiryu doesn't have a ton of room for error, so don't bet the house on him. That's it for this breakdown. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.